I mean, the traditional way. I'll talk about the traditional bit, and then I'll come on to the green light thing that you've heard yeah. about, which is a newer development, yeah. if, if you don't mind. Surgery, if I tell you what it actually involves, first of all, it might make it a little bit clearer. Yeah, no, I'm not sure if they just, what do they do? Yeah, please tell Well, me. normally what would happen is we give you a general anaesthetic, mm -hmm. so we put you to sleep. Uh, and then actually with a camera, we actually look down the penis into the actual sort of bladder and prostate area. Mm -hmm. And to actually reduce the size of it, they really, they, they cut away at the inside of the prostate, coring it out, almost like coring an apple, if you like. And that's what we'd normally do to actually open up the channel of water so it flows yeah. better. Now, what I would expect for most patients is that they'd be in hospital for a number of days, and it wouldn't be unusual to have a catheter for a couple of days after the operation as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, I suppose everyone wants to know about sort of drawbacks, side effects, and all the rest. Well, you hear a lot of stories. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, say, yeah. there certainly are, and I can't yeah. lie to you about that. There are always going to be risks and side effects from it. The things that we talk about, well, there are always risks of infections. We've heard about MRSA, obviously, and mm -hmm. we obviously do our best in all hospitals yes. nowadays to prevent that. But it is still a risk. Um, we also know that bleeding is a possibility because any type of surgery when you're actually operating and cutting the prostate, you can bleed from there. Going on to more specific problems, you've already mentioned really about sort of incontinence uh, and impotence as well, erection problems, mm -hmm. and there is a risk of that. They're, they're fairly small risks, I and mean, the actual numbers, if you want me to tell you, what sort no, of is quoted. Yes. For the actual impotence side, they quote between 1 in 10 and 1 in 20 gentlemen. Um, so it's not completely tiny risk, yeah. uh, but it yeah. is there. And I know already, obviously, that you're on medication that you use time to time for, mm. for erection problems, which may or may not help in the situation if it did get worse. I see, yes. Okay. Yeah. And the other one that a lot of chaps are very fearful of as well is incontinence, or yeah. losing control of your bladder. Yeah, so you have to wear catheter for the rest of your life. Yeah, and that's the one that a lot of chaps you know, don't like the sound of at all, that's quite sad, understandably. Yeah. Yeah. The actual sort of rates they quote for that, for the type of operation we're talking, is about one in a hundred. Which, you know, you can think of it the other way, of course, which is 99 out of 100, right, yes. don't have a problem. Yes. But there is still that risk. You know, we have to obviously mention yeah. these and explain them to you. Certainly a yeah, more acceptable risk than 1 in 15, I think. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Right. And um, would, if, if we were to go down the line of surgery, would that remove the symptoms? I would be very hopeful that it would, yeah. but of course, I can't promise that. I understand, that. you can't. And there is always a sort of what we call a fail rate or a chance that it won't make a difference. Yeah. And in addition to that, some people do get better, but then later on, years down the line, you need to have something similar done again. So there's always that possibility. And again, that's because the prostate grows, and yeah. it continues to grow. Uh, so the symptoms can come back. Yes. But presumably, it would take a bit longer than if you hadn't had the operation. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, if I move on, unless you've got any specific questions so far on that, if I just mention the green light. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right, yes. This is a newer development. Um, it's a relatively new treatment compared to the old style way of doing things. And the actual procedure initially is very similar. They put you to sleep with an anaesthetic. They use a camera to mm -hmm. look into the bladder. But instead of actually scraping out the inside of the prostate, they use a laser to burn it away. Mm -hmm. Um, the initial reports of what we're getting through about it is that it does seem to be very well tolerated and people seem to get on very well with it because they seem not to bleed as much. They also seem less likely to need a catheter straight after the operation or if they do have one, they have it for less time. time. And because of that, people end up getting home a bit quicker as well. Yes. And what about the impotence? Is it there seem to be the quoted figures we're getting are that there's lower rates of those problems, mm. lower risks. but. As I said, it's a new, relatively new procedure, so the actual amount of information yes. we have, the amount of cases done, is not as big as yes, the other I understand, stuff. yes. So yes. I can't say in years to come that there might be a slightly no. different view on it. Then they might discover some long-term side effect of it. It's always they? possible, yeah. always possible, yeah. yeah. Right. What do you think so far about the sort of surgical side of things? Well, I, I'm going to have to think about it, and I'm going to have to talk it over with my partner. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, the risks are in terms of odds, small, but in terms of effect, considerable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so one has to balance that with waking up three times Indeed. and feeling tired and, and so on. Well, could I suggest also the one thing that I would maybe do is give you some more information about the actual operations. I've got some written information for you to take home and have a read. And maybe you can have a look with your partner yeah. as well, he can look through yeah. with you. Yeah. 
in the meantime, it might not be a bad idea to try cutting down the alcohol I should do and that. the caffeine. Yes, I and it gives us a bit that. of a chance to see if that helps. Yes, I've known gentlemen. Oh, sorry, you, you well, can. I said that would be the, the best answer. I'd happily forego yeah. uh, my late night coffee and drink a little, a lot less to avoid these symptoms. So. Well, I've certainly had chaps who've yes. done exactly that, and they've managed to avoid surgery for another few years. Yeah. So that would be an option, uh, and I would suggest trying that anyway. I would try. Yeah. Yes, certainly I will. Yes.